Hey everyone, I wrote a tutorial for how you can create a Simon memory game for the Flipboard. I'll post a link to it in the comments below. The Flipboard is a macro pad for Make It Hacken with the software and coding tutorials written by me. The written tutorial for Simon is 16 steps and it walks you through everything you need to know to make your very own game. It also has additional details if you want to learn about Visual Studio Code, the Flipper APIs and all that stuff. Thanks to Make It Hacken and Talking Sasquatch for recommending I make the game. I really hope you enjoy it. After this video, please take a moment to subscribe to their channels too. In the next 25 minutes, I'll follow the steps from the tutorials and explain as I go. My Discord server has giveaways and I can also help troubleshoot any issues you encounter. Let's get started. I'm in Visual Studio Code and I've followed all of the steps in building with VS Code. I successfully ran Flip Blinky, Flip Keyboard, and Flip Signal on my Flipper. And for this tutorial, it's important you at least got Flip Blinky working correctly. In step one, we're creating a Flip Simon project under Applications User. And for the next few steps, we'll be modifying files from Flip Blinky. So we'll start by copying the Flip Blinky PNG into our Flip Simon project, and then we'll rename it to flipsimon.png. Then over on the left, we'll click on Extensions or Control Shift X, and then we'll search for a Luna Paint, and then we'll click Install. Once installed, click Explore or Control Shift D so we see our files again. Open the Flip Simon PNG. Control Scroll Wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, right click to clear the pixels and left click to set them. Um, I'll just go ahead and draw an S here for our Simon icon. And then save the file and close the files. Copy application.fam from Flip Blinky. And then we'll update our fields so that they're Simon related fields. So the app ID, uh, the name, the entry point, the FAP icon, category, and description will all be updated. Um, the entry point has to match exact case of what you type in your app.c file. Uh, it's a version 1.0 app, so we'll name that version 1.0. Um, and again, it's a game, so put it in the games category. Delete the FAP icon assets. For your description, don't forget to leave the quote and the comma at the end of all the lines. And FAP author and FAP web URL are optional parameters, but we'll go ahead and add in an author and a URL where people can find out more about the application. Go ahead and type in your name and your website URL. And again, don't forget to put the quote comma at the end of the line. Go ahead and save that file. And then next we'll create a new file called app.c. This is where all our code's gonna live. And we'll just copy over this code that just runs and exits. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, and then save that app.c. And now make sure your flipper's hooked up and it's the moment of truth. Control Shift B and launch app on flipper. And this may take a moment to run. Errors will be printed in red. There we go. More than one flipper was attached. So disconnect my second flipper. Control Shift B, launch app on flipper again and this time it ran. The app immediately exits, so, but now we can, it's installed, so we can go into apps, and we can go down into our games category that we chose, and there's our icon and the name that we specified. Uh, when we run it, you can see it just runs and exits. Step two, we'll turn our application into a Flipboard app, so we'll go ahead and copy the common folder from Flip Blinky and put it into Flip Simon. And then we'll copy our app config from Flip Blinky and put it into Flip Simon. We'll edit all the Flip Blinky stuff to be Simon based. The primary item name is what shows in the main application menu. So we'll just change that to Play Simon. If your application doesn't use sub gigahertz, it's recommended you delete this pound define. And for the about text, I'll just change it to Simon version 1.0. Go ahead and save that file. Next, we're gonna open up that app.c file we made in step one, and we're gonna copy this new code into it instead. 
This new code uses the common code to make a Flipboard application. All right, good news. We're at the run the application step. So control shift B, launch app on Flipper. This time I only have one Flipper attached, so hopefully we don't get any errors. I'll go ahead and launch Q Flipper. And you can just use your Flipper. You don't have to use Q Flipper here. I'm just doing that as an example. Um, and if these colors don't show up, go ahead and use the right arrow to choose different colors. In the about, we see our new Simon V 1.0. And in play Simon, we haven't implemented anything yet. Step three is about changing the Flipboard lights so that they show a sequence when we start the app. We'll go ahead and replace these include statements. And next we'll register a custom event handler in our Flipboard Simon app function. Um, so for this, you're gonna have to go right above the view dispatcher run call and paste that code. And this is gonna call our custom event handler code whenever we start or have messages. So next we'll go ahead and copy that custom event handler code. And when it says paste above, paste it above the comments. Those comments are the comments in green. So paste it a little bit above uh, the green there. Next, we're gonna create a loaded app menu function and we're gonna paste that above the last function. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. And this time your Flipboard should have a nice light startup sequence. Step four adds a press OK to play message. So we'll go ahead and copy this include. And these are normally ordered, so we'll paste it right below Flipboard model. And then we're going to replace our get primary view. So it was just a blank screen. And instead, it's going to talk about the view draw method and our data model. And then we'll go ahead and copy this view draw method just above our get primary view. And on line 21, it does say press OK to play. It's just kind of cut off in this video. Control Shift V, launch app on Flipper. I'll open Q Flipper and go down to play Simon and there's our press OK to play. Uh, the OK button doesn't do anything yet. We'll add that code in step six. Uh, for step five, we're gonna add game state to our model. Um, right now, our only game state is the game over game state. So go ahead and paste that to the top of your file. We'll add a structure. This keeps track of all of our properties, like the game state. In our Flipboard Simon app, we'll set and initialize that game state. So let's go ahead and add that right above this view dispatcher run call. And we'll replace our draw code with an if statement that checks to make sure it's game over before it says press OK to play. Um, our game state is only game over. Uh, so in this case, it'll always say press OK to play for now. But in future steps, we'll have more states. And there we go. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. I'll go ahead and launch Q Flipper to show you. Um, but it looks the same as before. So it just says press OK to play and it doesn't do anything. In step six, we'll make OK start a game. Uh, so first we're gonna go ahead and add a new game event so that we can tell the system that we're trying to start a new game. And then in our get primary view, we're gonna add a set input callback. So it calls a function. If you go to outline, this is a nice way to find the different pieces. You can see in yellow, these are the different enums we have, and purple, these are the different functions we have. So it's an easy way to jump around. Um, so here's get primary view. Right below here, we go ahead and paste our code. And we'll paste in the Simon input view. When you press the OK button, it'll trigger that new game event. Next, we have to add a new state so that we know that we're actually in the new game state. So instead of just game over, we'll now have a state of game over or it's a state of, it's a new game that we're populating. In our custom event handler, when it gets that new game event, when we click the OK button, it's gonna change our game state so that our game state is now new game. 
It's also going to call the update GUI to update our UI. And then finally, in Simon View Draw, if we are in a new game, instead of saying press OK to play, we'll put in this new message. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. And I apologize that the text on line 45 is dropped, but you can scroll to the right if you want to see the message. And we'll go ahead and see it here when we press OK, creating new game. Notice we have a new state, but it doesn't actually do anything. We'll do something in step eight. In step seven, we want to handle the back button so that every time you go back and then into the game, you always get the press OK to play message. So we'll register a couple of callbacks here, one for navigation and one for when we enter a scene. When we enter a scene, it's going to call the Simon enter callback function, which is going to reset our state to game over. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. I'll go ahead and open Q Flipper. We'll go down to Play Simon, press OK. Creating new game, nothing happens. Back, go back in, press OK. So there you go. Go ahead and close Q Flipper. So step eight turns the Flipboard lights on dimly so that you can see which colors are associated with which buttons. We'll add the code to make the buttons dim right after setting the game state to over. And then Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. And then over on our Flipper, when we go into the Play Simon menu, you should now see the buttons dim. In the config, make sure you set colors for each of the buttons. In step nine, we'll generate a random song and we'll output the song to the debug port. So for now, we'll set the song length to five notes. And then we'll go ahead and update our Simon game structure. The order of the items in the structure typically doesn't matter unless you're saving it to an SD card. Next, we'll create a function that returns a random number of one, two, four, or eight. And this represents the button that we want or the note in our song. And then next we'll write a function that generates a random song of the proper length and logs the song to the debug port. We'll update our custom event handler code so that when there's a new game, we call generate song. And remember, it's a replace this code with this code. So whenever you see that, you're gonna to wanna to highlight the old code and copy in the new code and hit save. Control Shift B and launch app on Flipper. Uh, this time I've brought up QFlipper and a web browser. I'm going to go to labflipper.net CLI, and you can see we have to close QFlipper first and say try again. The very first time, you may also have to select your COM port. Um, go ahead and say log debug, and now we can see any debug messages that get sent. So over on my flipper, I'm going to click OK to make a new game. And there's our notes, back button, and OK to make a new game, and there's our new set of notes. Great, this is working fine. Make sure you close that browser or you won't be able to deploy new code. Step 10, we teach the notes to the user. So first we need to add a new teach notes event to our event IDs. So instead of just new game, we also have teach notes. Next, we'll add a delay of how long we wait before we start teaching those notes. And so this is a thousand milliseconds or one second. In our custom event handler, we're going to replace the following code with this code. So copy the with this code. Go into your custom event handler, select the old code and paste in the new code and hit save. We'll add a new game state that indicates that we're trying to teach the song. So select game state and then we'll add our new state at the end of this list. And then we'll update our Simon game structure again and remember the order of these fields don't matter since we're not saving the file anywhere uh, so we'll go ahead and just put it at the end next we'll update our generate song function so that it sets our successful note and the current note to zero so we know we're at the beginning of the song and that we haven't tried to teach them any notes and then we'll create a function that plays the note and lights up the flipboard button so that the user knows which note 
and it'll delay 500 milliseconds while it lights it up and while it turns it off. Our Simon teach note function will teach the user the next note. And over in our custom event handler, we'll add a new else block so that when we get the teach note event, we call the Simon teach notes. So we'll go ahead and add that after this last else if and hit save. And in Simon view draw, we'll also add an else if to let them know uh, that we're teaching them the note. So put that after your last else if and hit save. Control shift B, launch app on Flipper. And this time when we go into play Simon and click OK, we can see it teaches notes. We can also see if we click, nothing happens. And play Simon, OK to play. And there's the different random note. In the next step, we'll allow the user to repeat the notes. So we'll add a new event for when it's the player's turn. And we'll add this just below teach notes. Next, we'll update Simon teach notes to fire the custom event. And we want to fire that custom event after we've taught them all the notes they need to play. So just after the if statement. And then we'll update our Simon game state enu to have a listening state, which means that we're listening for the user to press the note. And then we'll update our custom event handler so that when it's the player's turn, we set the state to listening. Next, we'll update the Simon view draw function so that it prints your turn when we're in the listening state. Uh, again, I'm sorry that the text is always cut off here, um, but if it's state listening, it's gonna print your turn. In Simon enter callback, we're gonna set a button monitor that's gonna call flipboard debounce switch whenever a button is pressed on the flipboard. So add that to the bottom of the function. And then next we'll go ahead and add that implementation for Flipboard debounce switch. This ignores presses when we're not listening. Uh, it sets the color and plays the tone. And when we release the button, it logs old button was in the button ID. We'll update get primary view to call an exit callback method when we're exiting the view with the back button. And then we'll add that Simon exit callback function above our get primary view comments. This is gonna clear that button monitor that we set on their enter callback. Control shift B, launch app on Flipper. And now the Flipper should play the notes back when it's our turn, but it's just logging the button that's released. Let's add some code to see if the user pressed the wrong button. So first we'll go edit our custom event ID and add a new event for when they press the wrong note. And then next we'll add a custom event ID for when they've played the full sequence that we taught them. When the user releases the button, we wanna check their guess. So we'll edit flipboard debounce switch. And right where we're doing our log of the button they released, which is down near the bottom of the function, we'll call Simon handle guess. Next, we'll add the Simon handle guess function above our flipboard debounce switch. And this will send wrong note if it's the wrong note or played sequence if they finish the sequence. Over in our custom event handler, we'll add a new else if statement to check if it's the wrong note. So put this after the last else if. If it is the wrong note, we'll set the state to game over. And then for played sequence, we'll either set it to game over or teaching, depending on if they finish the song. Control shift B, launch app on Flipper.
When you win or lose, it just says press OK to play. So in this next step, we'll tell the users if they won or lost. In our Simon Enter callback, we're going to set our song length to zero. So if you press back and play Simon, we'll reset the length to zero. In Simon View Draw, we're going to replace our existing code with this new code. If the song length is zero, it says press OK to play. If note number and song length are the same, it says win. And otherwise, it says loss. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. And here you can see that lost message. We'll press OK to start a new game. And we've played all five notes successfully, so win message. Next, we'll create an ending so they know what they did wrong. In our custom event handler code, we're going to replace this code with the following code. So go into custom event handler, find the wrong note section of the if statements, and instead of just setting the state, it's going to call lost game function. Next, we'll go ahead and create that lost game function just above custom event handler function. And this code plays the note three times and vibrates the flipper. Control Shift B, launch app on flipper. And next we'll create an ending for when they win. So we're going to replace this code with the second code. And instead of setting the game state to game over, it's going to call one game when the length of the song matches the note that they're on. And this if statement is inside that other else if. There we go. And next we're going to want to create that one game function above our custom event handler. And this will turn all four lights on and do a frequency sweep. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper. And now we have win and lost routines. And the last step we're going to do is we'll change the length of the song to 12 notes to make it more challenging. And every time you play a note, we'll speed up the song. We'll copy this list of millisecond delays just below our pound defines. You can change these numbers to make it harder or easier. Next, we're going to replace the Simon play note so that it takes an extra delay parameter instead of that hard coded 500 milliseconds. And then we'll update the Simon teach notes function so that it uses that delay parameter. And if there are more notes than are in our delays array, this will keep picking the last entry in the delays array for the timing. Control Shift B, launch app on Flipper.
Thanks for watching this tutorial. I appreciate all your time. Please like and subscribe. And if you need any help, please join me in the Discord server. And if you have other ideas for the Flipboard, please let me know those too. Thanks a lot.